let me go into the book. This is a book, and I think we're going to quickly have a view at the various chapters. So this is a um, the cover, and then we're going to go in the table of contents. So the book just starts with an introduction what CMake is and the various um, ways to run it on your OS, etc., uh, which I find really nice. Um, then you get a bit of an introduction into the CMake language. And then actually we you now get an introduction into the CMake uh, popular IDEs. And um, then we start with setting up our first CMake project. Um, Rafael, what do you try to uh, cover with the book as a total? Um, as you know that you're setting up your first CMake project here. Um, and working with um, with targets, etc. Um, can you say something about that? Yeah, sure. So this is actually the second edition of the book, right? If uh, if sure. you're aware, there was this previous first edition of the book that I published uh, a bit, I think about two years before this one came out, and. In the original book, what I intended to do is just essentially introduce people to CMake as a tool and help to bring all of the knowledge that's available out there into something that's cohesive and essentially takes you from the beginning to the end in a way that doesn't essentially generate too many questions. Like when you have a project that you want to build, that you want to make professional and presentable, uh, so that it's up to the standard available out there, it's very difficult to find a cohesive guide, how you start, how you get to the middle and to the end, and what else you have to think about as you build your C++ or other code specifically. Um, and after writing the first book and arriving at the very end of that book, as I was you know, submitting my chapters to the uh, publisher, at the very end, I realized that actually, <laughs> I learned so much in the process that I probably should start from the beginning and start re-editing the first, second, and third chapters all over again. So whenever the opportunity was presented to me to come up with a second edition, more or less, that's what I did. Essentially, I wrote um, a good attempt to explain CMake, <laughs> and then I was given an opportunity to actually try and do it as best as I possibly can. So with this book, what I'm trying to do is teach you um, and everybody who actually had some experience with CMake um, before how you can start with something that you already understand, which is C++ code, um, and make it so that others can also use it. And if you haven't had experience with CMake before, it's good to start from the perspective of somebody who has used CMake from, let's say, other people's project. And essentially understand, okay, here's a project, how do I use CMake within the project so I can use the project? That makes sense. Actually, yeah, I've, I've been looking today at the printed book and in the pre previous, I've read through some of the uh, um, ebook you see here. Um, actually, here gets interesting with compiling C++ sources with CMake um, at 169. So your book is quite extensively about say, CMake, but then also handles, of course, you know, the, the needs of C++ projects. Um, and I do know, actually, um, then you cover uh, linking executables with libraries. Um, and uh, the project you design also ha has libraries in it, which I like. That's actually something which I want to take a look at. Um, then you go into managing dependencies with CMake. And um, actually, let's talk a bit about uh, using C++ 20 modules. Uh, how was your experience there with CMake? It was a mixed bag, honestly. Um, and you can see that through the chapter as I, as I, as I wrote it. Um, at the time when the chapter of the book was created, there was not that much support in um, the environment itself. So all the tool chains, all the compilers, they weren't providing everything that's necessary to just have it in the CMake projects. Um, however, at the time, I, I tried to make the best attempt at 
explaining how you can still do this regardless, like which specific version of which specific compiler would allow you to use this. Uh, and that's, I believe, uh, done for um, GNU, GNU project, uh, GNU, GNU compiler and also clan. Um, so I do have those two alternatives discussed there. Um, and what else you need to do to essentially use that. Um, but CMake only actually fully allows that in, I believe, 328 uh, or, or something like that. Uh, and you, you have to go through like multiple hacks before that to actually use it in earlier versions of CMake. So that kind of depends which version of CMake you're kind of forced to use. And from there, you can make it into a very nice way or a very hacky way. Uh, regardless, I still feel like C20 modules are not yet a first class citizen in, in CMake and in the uh, environment just yet. So maybe in a year we will have something that doesn't give you any problems whatsoever. But right now, I think this is like as cutting edge as you can possibly get. Yeah, I do think that also modules is still in, in a form and in a way being rolled out that, you know, GCC 15 now brings better support for it, but still who's running on 15 right, right now? If you use GCC mm -hmm. and Clang and um, then at some point we have to iron out all those differences between the implementations. Yep, yep, there's yeah. plenty of work there. Um, this is That's... definitely very early days. It's going to shape the next years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm hoping that with this chapter, it would allow people who want to play with it already and understand you know, what the mm, challenges are to have their go and like, OK, mm -hmm. at least you know, pull the curtain away a little bit and allow them to step in. True. Um... Then you continue with testing frameworks, which I'm always a fan of, you know, testing is actually mentioned. Um, and that's something where I have to look at again, like I know CMake has test integrations, but then, uh, generally um, people might, you know, prefer to run their own. So can you turn a bit of light on testing with CMake? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a very undervalued feature of CMake. A lot of people don't realize how powerful this is. Uh, so I wanted to have a specific chapter just on the testing frameworks, because of course, like the book is about creating professional projects, right? And there is not a single professional project without automated tests. You have to have it. Otherwise, what are you even doing? <laughs> uh, I'm joking, but you, you get the point. So you can, of course, run your custom uh, test framework from the command line and just don't use CMake features whatsoever. But what CMake brings here is it's a standardized way of doing things, right? So it doesn't matter which frameworks you're going to bring in. As long as you use C to C test, the tool that comes with CMake, you're essentially allowing your users and you know your systems that you uh, put your projects into to use a standardized way across the board. So if you're part of a, of a team and like a bigger company and the company has multiple different C++ projects, if all of you are going to use CMake, there's only one way that the environment has to support it. And then from C test, you can essentially use whatever you'd like. However, it's always recommended to go with the testing frameworks that are the most popular and have the richest um, support and uh, community around them. That's true. Um, you continue then with program analysis tools and generating documentation, um, installing and packaging, which I think is all important things. And, and then on, on, on the 15th chapter, you go through creating your professional project. Um, mm -hmm. What's this chapter about? Because now we have like 14 chapters behind us where we you know already in chapter four we setting up we're setting up our first CMake project and what are you doing now in the 15th chapter? Yeah. So as you go through this table of context and you kind of like understand different things, all of them are presented to you, you know, in a smaller scope individually, right? You get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I try to like strip away all of the context out of the um, specific problem that we are focusing on just to make it simpler and easier to focus on. But as we go through um, all of these things, 
eventually they end up in a bigger project, right? All of these things you would love to have is something that's like a cohesive, uh, well-structured unit. So the chapter uh, that, that you just mentioned, 15, is essentially doing that. Everything that we learned so far, now we are putting together to build this bigger thing. And how we are gonna do that, this is essentially going through all of the previous chapters, recognizing which of the techniques are presented there, making some picks, you know, you, the book presents you with many alternatives, so I've just picked something that worked well together and making those choices. And this is how all of these things come together in a project that then you can build, distribute, package, uh, and so on and so forth. That's true. Um, and then we, we have the last chapter, which is about CMake presets. Mm -hmm. Which right. I so, really like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go ahead. Anyways, it's mm -hmm. I think it's like something which is a bit underdocumented in some ways. So it's really nice to see that this is part of your book. Yes, that's right. I found this, um, you know, very uh, interesting to add at the very end because when you end up in having you know complete project, um, there is still a little bit of command line that allows you to customize CMake depending on you know, what environment you're building for, what platform, you know, all the other stuff that you perhaps want to have. But for some users, there is not that much use case, you know, for giving them too much customization or you essentially want to simplify those things. And CMake presets are essentially that thing. They allow you to configure all the command line that you're gonna to use to execute the build of the project. And they allow you to make it even higher level than just the CMake itself. Right, so CMake presets are the way to do that, and just introducing it at the very end are, is uh, very valuable because now you can understand, you know, like what is the workflow, how different stages come together in order to build this project, and how you can make it even more convenient for your users to use the project straight uh, from from your repository. Yeah, it's something I, I gotta read up on. Um, which basically, this is the book, and as I mentioned, you know, I, I, I do think it's really helpful if you want to read up for modern CMake to have it. Um, let's go over to the interview part, 